हेलो क्लास नाइन्थ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक वर्धमान महावीर एंड जैनिज्म व्हिच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ लेसन थ्री मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव्स अर्ली लाइफ ऑफ महावीर मेन टीचिंग्स ऑफ जैनिज्म सेक्ट्स ऑफ जैनिज्म डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ जैनिज्म इम्पैक्ट ऑफ जेन्स बिफोर द डिस्कशन ऑफ टॉपिक वी मस्ट नो द फॉलोइंग टर्म्स लाइक सेक्ट्स स्मॉल डिविजन ऑफ द लार्ज ग्रुप स्पेशली अ रिलीजियस ग्रुप कॉम्प्लिकेटेड समथिंग or someone difficult to understand divine part divine part means part coming from god tirth ankar saint with divine part or savior and spiritual teacher renounce renounce means give up the worldly pleasure mortification great embarrassment and shame enlightenment enlightenment is defined as being advanced in having gained necessary information or knowledge specially spiritual knowledge salvation saving of the soul from sins and its consequences austerity condition of living without unnecessary things and comforts children today we are going to discuss about the early life of mahavir vardhman popularly known as mahavir and regarded as the founder of jainism in india according to the jains mahavir was the 24th and the last tirth ankar the first tirth ankar was rishabdev he made jainism he means lord mahavir popular and systematic that is why mahavir is considered as the founder of jainism but Mahavir was born in Kundagram near Vishali in the second half of the 6th century BC. His father was chief of Kshatriya clan and the mother Trishala belonged to a royal family of Lichavis. Mahavir was well educated and married to Yashoda. At the age of 30 after the death of his parents he renounced the world in search of truth. he practiced the swear discipline and the self mortification and suffered many hardships for 12 years at the age of 42 he attained the perfect enlightenment and became mahavir or jinna means the conqueror his followers came to be known as jains he died at pawa near rajagraha in 468 bc at the age of 72 teachings of jainism ahimsa means non violence no faith in yajna no faith in caste system attainment of salvation life after death karma theory heart penance five woes that is not to injure life not to tell a lie not to steal not to possess any property to practice chastity now let's come to the reading part The Vardhman Mahavir and Jainism, page number one hundred nineteen. Just have a look on the picture of Vardhman Mahavir. Now let's come to the reading part. Early life of Mahavir. Vardhman, popularly known as Mahavir, is generally regarded as the founder of Jainism in India. According to Jains, Mahavir was the twenty fourth and the last Tirthankar. Tirthankar means the saint with the divine power of granting salvation to his disciples. Disciple means his students the first tirthankar was rishabdev and 23rd tirthankar was the the parswanath the son of the king ashvesna of banaras and according to professor jacobi he was the real founder of the jain religion but it was a mahavir who is generally regarded as the founder of jainism it means mahavir was the 24th and the last of tirthankar he made jainism popular and systematic that is why mahavir is considered as a founder of jainism the first tirthankar was rishabdev about the early life much information is not available he was born at kundagram near vaishali in 540 bc His father Siddharth was a head of Kshatriya clan known as Janantrika his mother Trishala was the Lichavi princess Mahavir was well educated and married to Yashoda 
he had a daughter who married to jamali the first disciple of mahavir mahavir renounced the world at the age of 30 left his home and wandered from place to place in search of truth he practiced several disciples and self mortifications mortifications means feeling of embarrassment and shame and suffered many hardships for 12 years at the age of 42 he attained the perfect enlightenment means the spiritual knowledge and became mahavir or jinna jinna means conqueror so his followers came to be known as jains he often met bimbisara and ajashatru who were impressed by his teachings he died at pawa rajgraha in 468 bc at the age of 72 it means mahavir was born at kundagram near veshali in bihar in the second half of the 6th century bc his father was chief of the kshatriya clan and mother trishala belonged to the royal family of lichavi mahavir received his early education in all specialized branches he was married to yashoda and he was having one daughter and he married this daughter to jamali and who was his first disciple at the age of 30 after the death of his parents mahavir renounced the world in search of true knowledge he roamed around 12 years in search of truth at last he obtained the supreme knowledge he subdued the desires and became the jinna means conqueror his followers came to be known as the jains means those who have conquered their desires many of the kings from the royal kingdoms like bimbisara and ajatshatru they were greatly impressed by his teachings and at the age of 72 lord mahavir died at pawa near rajgira in 468 bc there is one very important saying by radha kumun mukherjee for lord mahavir mahavir had royal support in which the support jainism owned its popularity mahavir had equal influence with the republic of his times there is a reference to the honor done to his memory by 36 republic having the funeral illuminations at his death in society was greatly influenced by the teachings of lord mahavir main teachings of jainism what mahavir taught formed the teachings of jainism which are as follows ahimsa ahimsa means non violence the first and the foremost principle of jainism was ahimsa or non injury to everyone it is why most of the jains walk barefooted filtered water before drinking and even lie a band of a cloth around their mouth so that they may not swallow small insect they even take care not to injure any plant or tree not to cause harm to men birds and beast this principle was against the rising spirit of animal sacrifice in yajna it means jainism is a philosophy which is based on love and respect for all living creatures no faith in yajna sacrifices and ritualism jainism was a sort of revolt against the superiority of the brahmins and their yajnas sacrifice and useless rituals the jains stopped performing all these things they went even further and refused to accept the authority of vedas it means jainism did not accept the authorities of the vedas and they were against the rituals of the brahmins like the yajnas sacrifice and useless rituals which are performed in the society no faith in caste system jainism struck a deadly blow to the caste system and all sort of the class distinction it preached that equality of human being all who have faith in jainism do not follow any class distinction it means jainism was against the caste system they did not want to make any sort of discrimination among the people moreover they believed in equality attainment of salvation salvation means moksha the jains like the hindus believed that the chief aim of the man is to attain salvation 
or freedom from the cycle of birth and rebirth. This salvation can be achieved by following the three jewels, three, three ratna of the right faith, right knowledge and right conduct. It means a person can get moksha or salvation by following the three jewels like right faith, right knowledge and right conduct. By following these paths, one can attain the salvation means the freedom from the cycle of birth and rebirth. Life after death and karma theory, the Jains like the Hindu and Buddhist believe in the life after death and transmigration of soul. According to them, one acquire a new life according to the actions. Action means karma in his past life. It means Jains also believed in life after death. Our present life is a result of our previous actions. Hard penance and self-sacrifice The Jain believed in hard penance to die by the starvation is regarded as a virtue of them. The idea behind the practice of this rigorous discipline gives a strength to the soul and keeps the worldly desires subdued. It may be mentioned here that lying much emphasis on, on hard penance failed to attract many followers for Jainism. Jain believed in penance to die of starvation. Jainism lays so much stress on the severe penance that very few people could lead such an austral life. Five woes for Jain. Every Jain has to take the following five woes. Not to injure life, not to tell a lie, not to steal, not to possess any property and practice chastity. It means non-injury to living beings, especially the human, animals, plants and insect is important in Jain philosophy. According to Mahavir, violence of the three kinds, that is physical violence, like killing, causing, injuring or pain. Violence in words or harsh language and mental violence like ill will towards others. According to Jain, everyone has right to live. This Every Jain has to take the five woes that is not to injure life, not to tell a lie, not to steal, not to possess any property and to practice chastity. Moreover, this doctrine came to be regarded as the five woes which every Jain is supposed to take. The Jain tradition speak to the 24 Trittankars, but the last two, that is the Parswa and Mahavir, are the most famous. The first four, woes, means that that is not to injure life, not to tell a lie, not to steal, not to possess any property, were enunciated by the Parswa, while the fifth woe of chastity, means celibacy, was added by Mahavir. Then in this video, we will discuss till here. And you will have to reread this part, learn the basic terms and kindly follow the SNAP homework. In next video, we will discuss sects of Jainism, doctrine of Jainism and impact of Jainism. To class 9, in this video, we will discuss sects of Jainism. Jainism has two sects. Number one is the Shutambras or white clads. They fasted but did not believe in the extreme penance and austerity. Next is the Gambras. They followed the Badrabahu, they consider sky as their clothing and do not believe in covering their bodies which signifies their detachment from the worldly bonds. They were orthodox and followers of the Lord Mahavi. They kept long fast and led a life of austerity. Come to the reading part. Sex of Jainism, page number 120. Differences arose between the Bhadrabahu, who took Jainism to the Karnataka and the Sthula Bhadra, who was based in the Madh. This led to the division of Jainism into two sects. Shwetambras or the white clad led the uh, Sthul Bhadra. They fasted but did not believe in the extreme penance or and austerity. Austerity means feeling of embarrassment or shame. Digambras followed the Bhadrabahu they consider the sky as their clothing and do not believe in covering their bodies, which signifies 
the detachment from the worldly bonds they were orthodox followers of mahavir they kept long fast and led a life of austerity it means during the time when the bhadra bahu took zanism to karnataka there arose differences between him and the sthul bhadra who was based on magh in the first jain council held around the 300 bc these differences came to surface as a result jain was divided into two groups that is shwetambras or digambras the shwetambras wore the white clothes and covered their faces with a small white clothes to avoid killing the tiniest of the insect or germs that might enter in their nose while breathing they fasted but did not believe in extreme penance and austerity on the other side the gambras were sky clad and did not believe in covering their bodies according to the gambras living without clothes signifies detachment from worldly pleasures moreover they were orthodox followers of mahavir they kept long fast and led a austere life doctrines of zenism according to mahavir the ultimate goal man is the attainment of moksha or freedom from worldly bondage one can attain moksha by following the three ratna or the three jewels like right faith right knowledge right conduct now let's come to the reading doctrine of zenism number 1 is the three ratnas according to mahavir the ultimate goal of man is attainment of moksha or freedom from the worldly bondage one can attain moksha by following the three ratna or the three jewels these are right faith right knowledge and right conduct these three ratna inspire the true jains to have faith in 24 tirthankars to acquire knowledge from their sermons and lead a good life karma the jains believes in the theory of karma good deeds alone liberate a man from the cycle of life and death it means mahavir preach that the ultimate goal of man is to attain freedom from the worldly bonds to attain moksha it can be obtained by following the three jewels like right faith right knowledge right conduct moreover the jain share the hindu and buddhist belief of the cycle of birth death and rebirth the soul is immortal and the constantly evolving the present physical condition of the soul is based on the past karma or action good action alone can lead the soul to freedom from the cycle of birth death and rebirth now we will discuss impact of jainism jainism made a great contribution to the political social religious and cultural life of india jainism emphasized the doctrine of non-violence which resulted in the feeling of peace in the social field jainism did a meritorious job by removing the evil of the varna system or caste system the jain believed in the equality of men in the religious sphere jainism worked to remove the several evils it saved the people from the cumbersome yajnas and simplified the complex rituals it also preached against the animal sacrifice the jain made the ample use of art and architecture for the propagation of their religion now let's come to the reading part impact of jainism jainism made a great contribution to the political social religious and cultural life of india political life jainism emphasized the doctrine of non-violence which resulted in the feeling of peace even the kshatriyas gave up their fighting spirit and gradually became peace loving as we know jainism gave the most stress on the doctrine of non-violence means ahimsa which resulted in the feeling of peace it means that they wanted to create peace through the means of non-violence moreover by following the principle of ahimsa even the kshatriya gave up the fighting spirit and gradually became the peace lover social life in the field of social jainism did a meritorious job by removing the evil of varna system or caste system the jains believed in the equality of men beside their faith in non-violence and doing good to the others prompted them with a goal of service to all 
इट मीन्स जेनिज्म डिस्कार्डेड द कास्ट सिस्टम दे वर नॉट इन फेवर ऑफ कास्ट सिस्टम दे बिलीव इन द इक्वेलिटी ऑफ मैन रिलीजियस लाइफ इन द रिलीजियस फेयर जेनिज्म वर्क टू रिमूव द सेवरल इवेंट्स इट सेव द पीपल फ्रॉम द कम्बरसम याजनास एंड सिंप्लीफाइड द कम्प्लेक्स रिचुअल्स इट ऑल्सो प्रीच अगेंस्ट द एनिमल सेक्रीफाइज इट मीन्स एज द जेनिज्म डिस्कार्डेड द कास्ट सिस्टम द सेम वे दे शन द रिचुअल्स एंड एनकरेज द सोशल सर्विस दे वर नॉट इन फेवर ऑफ एनिमल सेक्रीफाइज कल्चरल लाइफ द जैन मेड द एम्पल यूज ऑफ द आर्ट एंड आर्किटेक्चर फॉर द प्रोपिगेशन ऑफ देर रिलीजन इन दिस वे दे एम्पली कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू द डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर स्कल्पचर एंड आर्ट दे बिल्ड द स्टूपास मोनेस्ट्रीज मोनेस्ट्री इज ए प्लेस विद द मॉन्ग्स लिव एंड टेम्पल्स टू परपेचुएट द मेमरी ऑफ देयर सेंट्स एंड सेजेस दे ऑल्सो डेकोरेटेड देयर बिल्डिंग्स विद सम रेलिंग ब्यूटिफुल गेट वे स्टोन अम्ब्रेलाज and finally carved pillars they built beautiful temples and images of their sacred places like the Par- parshavam hill pavapuri in bihar rajgrah girnar and mount abu the jain temple at mount abu in rajasthan is fine specimen of the jain temple architecture the jain also cut rock to build the caves and rock, rock temples the hathi gumpha cave in orissa The Indra Sabha cave in Ellora and Loin cave in Udaygiri are the fine specimen of the Jain art. The Jain artist also excelled in the field of making the huge images and the sculptures. The colossal status of the Gomteshwar which is situated at the Shravan Bagola at Karnataka is known as its huge height about 70 feet and the grandeur the place has become an important jain pilgrimage site it means jains constructed temples and monasteries jain relics are found in udaygiri caves in orissa jains have constructed hundreds of the dharmshalas opened several orphanages and supported many charitable institutions moreover the huge structure of bahubali gomteshwara at the shravan bela gola are the good example of the jain art and architecture moreover dilware temple at mount abu in rajasthan and the ranakpur near the jodhpur and the jain tower at chittor are the famous for the jain architecture the shravan bela gola in karnataka is very famous for its huge height that is about 70 feet and jainism made a great contribution in the literary field also the chief works called the angas are written in prakrit prakrit is a language for common people they also wrote some other text in the abhransha but gradually they also took to the sanskrit and wrote legends and fables etc the several valuable books on the grammar and the poetics which contributed richly in the development of the sanskrit language it means jain scholar have made an important contribution in literary works the jain text was written in prakrit but at some places these texts were also written in the local languages the angas the 12 books containing the teachings of mahavir are the great source of knowledge the writings of the jains highlights the values of ahimsa moreover the text of jains was a great source of information children in this video we will do till here and you will have to reread this part learn the basic terms related question answers and kindly follow the snap homework thank you